Hi everyone, it's James here. Welcome back to Psalms and Prayers with the Beacon Church at the start of November. Today we are looking at Psalm 52 and just like the psalm before it, Psalm 51, we can place this psalm very easily in context, know the events that have led to these words that have been written. Now if you want, you can read the whole story in 1 Samuel 22. But what we see here is that David is on the run. He's been hiding from Saul and he had come to the house of Ahimelech. And we see that he has been uh, betrayed. His location has been given away to Saul by Doeg the Edomite. And he tells him where David has been hiding. And later when they come to the house of the priest, they kill 85 priests and their families. And that is done by the hand of Doeg. And this psalm that we read here is written in response to those actions, penned by David as he reflects on what has gone on. So let's hear the words, shall we, of Psalm 52. We can see from the instructions that it's for the director of music, a maskil of David, when Doeg the Edomite had gone to Saul and told him, David has gone to the house of Ahimelech. Why do you boast of evil, you mighty hero? Why do you boast all day long, you who are a disgrace in the eyes of God, you who practice deceit, your tongue plots destruction. It is like a sharpened razor. You love evil rather than good, falsehood rather than speaking the truth. You love every harmful word, your deceitful tongue. Surely God will bring you down to everlasting ruin. He will snatch you up and pluck you from your tent. He will uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see and fear. They will laugh at you, saying, Here now is the man who did not make God his stronghold, but trusted in his great wealth and grew strong by destroying others. But I am like an olive tree, flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love for ever and ever. For what you have done, I will always praise you in the presence of your faithful people, and I will hope in your name, for your name is good. In many respects, what we see here is maybe meant to be read, certainly in the first few verses, with a little bit of irony, uh, almost a little bit sarcastically, as David speaks to Doeg and says to him, you mighty hero, you who have attacked unarmed men who serve in the house of God. And we see that David goes on to outline really, firstly, who uh, Doeg is, the kind of man he is, the one who betrays with a tongue like a sharpened razor. Rather than speaking the truth, he seeks harm from others. We then see that he goes on and he paints this picture of what will happen to this man ultimately, who has betrayed God's true king uh, and what God's king has commanded him to do. He says, surely you will go down to everlasting ruin. Uh, he will. He is going to be plucked from his tent. He's going to be judged. God is going to look down on this person, on Doeg, uh, and judge him for the things that he has done. And we see this contrast between the righteous, those people who follow and live for God, laughing, at this person who has not made God his stronghold and his place of strength, instead is trusting in his own sense of, of what is right and wrong. And we see that David ends by almost contrasting that person, that individual who lives in their own way and in the way that they think is right, with the person who trusts in the Lord. And we see that the person who turns to God and finds their security in him is like an olive tree flourishing in the house of God. The hope of always praising the Lord, being in his presence with faithful people and hoping in his name. And the reality is this is true for everyone who knows the Lord Jesus, who is faithful to him, who comes before him in forgiveness and seeking right relationship. We have that hope of spending eternity with the king knowing that he is a faithful and loving God. Let's just take time today, shall we, to thank the Heavenly Father for the fact that he deals with people rightly, that he is just, that those who deserve judgment will get it, but those who put their faith and trust in the Lord, who confess their sin, will find peace with him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you today lord for the words of your of scripture heavenly father the your words that reveal things to us we thank you for for what we see here today lord for that 
beautiful picture of the fact that if we have our trust in you we have the hope of spending eternity in your presence with your faithful people who seek to worship and praise you lord help us to be those who speak correctly uh, lord use our tongues for your glory and ultimately lord be those who live for you in all things that we do heavenly father